choice depends on distinguishing one thing from another. We may not be able to put into words how we distinguish things, but we can say what is similar and what is different. These similarities and differences create a mental landscape with areas of certain sorts of products and regions of others. This may have islands or congested areas with high profile products or undeveloped territory. If we can map this mental landscape and describe that territory where there's opportunities for development, then we can see where there are new product possibilities. The challenge is to bring this internal map of the product domain into public view. A revolutionary procedure has been developed here at the University of Liverpool that allows us to look at the way people think about products and to map their mental landscape. By using the power of individual comments and focus group discussions, we can enrich our understanding of this mental map to help new product development and advertising. This is an example from chocolates that have been selected to cover the most popular on the market. The first stage is for people to consider the similarity and differences between chocolates. The main thing is that each of the ch chocolates in any given group are similar to each other in some important way about what you feel about them um, and different from the others. This gives us each person's own views about the similarities and differences between each of the products. Each person may be different, but there will be some overlap because they come from the same broad social group. We can take these different personal mental maps and put them into a computer. We do this by taking each person's judgment and using them to give a code for each chocolate. We can then combine these codes across any mixture of people. The computer then gives us a summary of the distinctions people make as if it were a combination of all their mental maps. We can turn this computer printout into a map of actual chocolates. This can then be presented back to the participants and they can understand and comment on it without any knowledge of statistics. Because I feel as though I'm a happy-go-lucky person, and that's what Maltesers remind me of. Uh, well, what is it about toffees that is like you? Yeah. I, like, I like the toffee and the crunchy ones. But you've got a hard centre. Well, I must be quality street. <laughs> we can do this with as many groups as we wish, of different kinds and different compositions. This gives us a range of ways of seeing the products. We can use a computer to combine these to get an overall map. We can enrich our understanding of what this means from the group discussions and individual you're, you're comments. You're soft inside, are you? Yeah, I think is. I am, yeah, actually, yeah. 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 Nice and smooth. Why, why? Nice and smooth. We are on like the same smooth, yeah. yeah, okay. I was going to put Ferreira Rasha, but I couldn't spell it. <laughs> <laughs> from the combination of the computer output and the comments from participants, we can identify how the consumer's conceptions work and where there may be opportunities for new products. So we end up with a, a map of people's conceptualizations of the chocolates. And what this shows in this particular example is that we have a set of products here that are really rather distinct from another group over here and distinct again from a third group.
Actually, there are many more than these simple three functions. We can identify a whole range of different ways in which these chocolates can be of use to people. We can explore these functions and uses by looking at the detailed comments that people make in the group discussions and in their individual writing so that we can take a particular group um, of these uh, more luxurious, uh, significant chocolates and see that they are described for, to give for a birthday present or they tend to be for, for women or they're to share with friends. Some people, of course, see them as a sheer luxury, not to share, um, or as a surprise that people might enjoy. Having established people's concepts and general descriptions of the uses and functions and meanings of these different chocolates, we can now identify areas in which there are currently no products. This allows us to define what may sit in that area by looking at the products on either side of it. Another interesting example is revealed by this gap here that is between products that people grab on the run to satisfy themselves as opposed to these more luxurious products that they see as something that is more rewarding, uh, richer and more special. So can we think of a product that is used for functional purposes uh, but takes some of its quality um, from the rewarding and satisfying aspects um, of these products? This brief film illustrates the essence of a powerful process this has been used for topics that range from police investigations of serious crimes through to the design of buildings. It has tremendous potential and wide applicability.